Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the online training for Wyobraska Gives. Uh, my name is Jenna Kodik. I am a project manager with Civicor. Civicor is the software company that's providing the website and the technology that makes WyobraskaGives.org um, and your giving day possible. Um, so today's training is going to walk you through the steps um, to get your nonprofit registered and approved on the site. Um, so we're going to start from the beginning with the registration process and kind of walk through all the steps that you'll need to do in order to get your nonprofit profile live and public on the wyobraskagives.org website. Um, so to start, um, you can always go to wyobraskagives.org um, and over here in the upper right hand corner, there's a login button. Um, so if you go down and select nonprofit, uh, it'll take you to the login page. Um, if you have not already registered, you'll need to click this button here to submit an inquiry to participate. Um, if you have already done that step, um, sort of bear with me while I walk through that um, for, the, for those who haven't done so. Um, so you just click here to submit an inquiry and it's going to take you to the registration form. Um, essentially, the Oregon Trail Community Foundation is working to collect some information here that will help them determine whether or not your um, organization is eligible to participate. So you'll go ahead and you'll fill out this form. Um, it will ask for some basic information about your organization, including a point of contact. Um, so whoever you enter here will be created as a user for your profile, so that this person should kind of be the main point of contact for your organization in terms of anything uh, Wyobraska gives related. Scrolling down, it'll ask for your organization name, your address, um, EIN number. If you don't have an EIN number, um, you can check this box, uh, and it won't require you to enter one. Um, Enter your website if you have some social media handles, operating budget, um, and then there are some acknowledgments and disclaimers um, down here at the bottom. So just for the sake of time, I'm not going to actually enter anything here, but when you hit submit, um, you'll be taken to um, this on-screen confirmation page. So this is just a notification that your registration has been received by the foundation and they are reviewing it. You are also going to receive an initial registration confirmation email, um, kind of just letting you know the same thing. So now that you've submitted the registration form, um, the Oregon Trail Community Foundation is reviewing all of that information. And as soon as they review it and approve your organization to participate in this event, you'll receive a second email um, letting you know that your organization has been approved to participate. Um, so this is the email that you're going to receive here. Um, one thing to note about this is this link down at the bottom. What that's going to do is going to allow you to log in to the system for the first time. Uh, when you click that link, it's going to also prompt you to set a password. Um, and then going forward, after you set that password and log in, um, every time going forward, when you go to this login page, you can just use your email and that password that you have set and just click login and you won't have to set your password or anything like that going forward. Um, so for the sake of this training, I have created a profile already. So I will log in. So when you log into the system, um, this is how you'll kind of manage all of your profile information, um, update anything like that. This is where you'll be able to eventually see uh, a history of donations made to your organization and all of that. Um, so when you log in, you land on a dashboard. Uh, and what you'll want to do is click over into the My Organization section. Uh, so this is really where the meat of um, your profile will be and how you'll um, complete the process of creating your profile. So kind of to orient you into what you're looking at here, um, if you scroll down on this overview tab, you'll see a lot of the information that you have already provided from that registration form. Um, 
So anything that you haven't provided or that wasn't asked on the registration form, this is where you'll have a chance to provide that additional information. So as a first step, um, and there are some uh, instructions up here to help, kind of help you walk through this process as well. So you'll see on the first bullet point, it's click the Edit My Profile button in blue. That is over here on the right-hand side. Um, so if you click Edit My Profile, it will pop open a form um, that will ask for some additional information from your organization. So um, questions like, um, you know, uploading your logo. Um, so your pro public profile page will want um, your organization's logo attached to it. Uh, another important part is this URL link. Uh, and what this URL link is it gives you an opportunity to create a unique URL that you can share with your network and your supporters um, that when those people click that link, it will take them directly to your profile page on the whyobraskagives.org site instead of directing people to the general site. Um, so for this example, um, I've used a Civicor, but if, you, if your organization um, obviously wants to use your own name or if there's a popular acronym that people recognize you by, um, this can really be whatever you'd like it to be that makes sense for your organization. Scrolling down, it'll ask for some additional information um, like matching funds, um, so your organization will have the opportunity to um, solicit matching funds for your day. So if your organization is able to secure a match, you'd want to go ahead and enter yes, and then it's going to ask you for the amount of that match. So say you have a generous donor that's offered to donate a $5,000 matching pool for you, you can enter that here. Um, organization contact information, this is different than the uh, individual user. This is asking for general contact information for the organization itself. Um, you can choose which um, address will show publicly on your profile, either physical or mailing. Uh, so if you choose mailing, just be sure to enter something for the mailing address. Again, there's website and social media links. And then uh, some additional content. Uh, so you'll want to enter your organization's mission statement. Um, and then you have the more about us, which is where you can kind of expand on your mission statement and just give a little bit more color about your organization. And then there's also the option to enter any testimonials that you might have for your organization. Um, and these three content areas will uh, be included on the public profile as well. So once you've gone through and you've entered all of the information, um, you'll want to click Submit. The last thing I'll note on this page, and really for um, anything that you're entering throughout the site, wherever you see a little asterisk next to a question, um, that means this is a required field. Um, so you will have to enter information into these required fields before you're able to save the form. We've gone through and entered all that information, um, so we're going to click Submit and Save. Um, and that takes care of uh, that portion of your profile. The other thing I wanted to point out on this overview tab is the user section. Um, so in addition to the user that gets created um, from the registration form, so if you remember, we entered that point of contact on the registration form, that person, um, probably the person filling out the form, but uh, that person automatically becomes a user. But if you want to add additional users from your organization, you can do that here. So you just um, click this green Add a New User button, enter their name, their email, um, enter any kind of password for them. It can be essentially um, a temporary password uh, and that person's phone number and click Save. I'll just do one here as an example. Uh, 
And then that person has been added as an additional user for your organization. So when that person goes to log in, where you can direct them to is this login page, and they should use this forgot password link. Um, so if you click forgot password, um, it's going to open a box that will allow you to enter your email, and then um, it'll send you a reset password link. So whatever users you enter, they can use that forgot password link um, and the email you entered for them, and they can log into the system that way um, and sort of set their password for the first time. Uh, another thing to note about the users is that everyone who is a user has the same access to your profile. Um, so that means they can edit and change information about your profile. They can see a history of donations and uh, donor information. Um, so just make sure that any users that you have entered for your organization should be able to see all of those things. If not, then I would recommend not making a user account for them. When you're logged in, um, you'll also on your user list see for yourself this um, button to sort of toggle between receiving donation letters and not. Uh, essentially what that is is do you want to receive an email every time someone makes a donation to your organization? If you do, um, you can leave this as yes, but if you want to opt out of those emails, that come through every time a donation is made, you simply click do not receive donation letters and then you'll be um, sort of taken out of that email list. Um, this can be changed at any time, so you can always toggle it back on, um, but each user will have the ability to do that for themselves. So that's kind of the overview tab um, for your profile. Um, so there are some additional pieces for your profile that can really help you um, tell a better story, um, provide more information about your organization, and really just showcase um, the best parts about your organization. So I'll walk through those pieces with you as well. The first one we're going to go into is uh, this multimedia tab. And what this area is, um, is an opportunity for you to upload additional photos for your organization's profile, as well as YouTube or Vimeo videos themselves. Um, so each of these um, images or videos will rotate in kind of a slideshow on your public profile. Uh, and I've added a couple here just as an example. Um, but similar to the organ or similar to the users area. Um, you just click the green Add Multimedia Entry. You can give it a title so that you can recognize what it is. Um, select whether it's a picture, a YouTube video, or a Vimeo video. Um, selecting that will give you a place to upload a picture or to enter the link to the YouTube video. And then just click Save. Um, and then they'll start to populate here. You can drag and drop these if you want to reorder. Um, the order in which they're shown on your public profile. Um, but essentially, this is a way to create a more dynamic um, and visually appealing um, part of the profile. Moving into this Programs tab, uh, this is an opportunity for you to uh, kind of give a little bit more information about the specific programs that your organization runs. Um, I've entered several or a couple here uh, as examples as well. Um, but when you're adding a new program, um, you can give it a name and this will show publicly. Um, and then you have, you can just enter as much or as little additional information about that program as you'd like. So if it has a particular budget, um, you can add a description about it, check off specific beneficiaries of that program, um, as well as defining sort of short-term and long-term success and how you measure progress and things like that. Um, so think about if you were a donor or a funder, someone looking at your nonprofit profile page, what information would they want to know about this specific program? So you can enter all this information, click Submit again, and it's just going to start listing these programs um, that you've entered. Anytime you see these three little lines, again, you can drag and drop the order to change the order that they show. Um, and if you ever maybe um, stop running a program or you want to remove a program from uh, the site, 
you can make a program inactive by clicking that button and then it will no longer show um, on the public profile. Marking a program inactive does not delete it in any way. Uh, you can always toggle this search filter to no and it'll show you the uh, programs that you've marked as inactive and you can always make them active again. So that's the programs area and again this will be public information on the profile if you provide it. And events is quite similar to programs in that you can start listing out upcoming events that might be of interest to your volunteers, to your donors and supporters, to your funders, um, really anyone that you think um, is going to be looking at your public profile page. So I have a couple examples here. Um, you know, maybe you have volunteer recruitment or orientation events coming up or um, big fundraising or annual benefit dinners or anything like that. Um, so you click add a new event, um, give the event a name, a date, start and end time, description, location, uh, and all of that information will become uh, publicly available on the website as well. If you want to remove an event from the website, similar to programs, you can sort of make them active and inactive. You can cancel an event um, by just clicking cancel. And then similarly, um, those are never deleted. They're simply sort of hidden from default view. So you can change the search filter to yes, and it'll show you um, sort of canceled events, and you can reverse things like that. And that's the events tab. Um, this next one is donation level. Um, and this is kind of an opportunity for you to be able to tie a specific monetary value um, to a specific good or service that your organization provides. Um, it, this is not uh, required, um, but so if you don't offer this, um, that's totally fine. But what this does is that when a donor goes to make a donation to your organization on the giving day, uh, when they're checking out and they're entering how much money they'd want to donate, if you've entered these donation levels, these will show up for them as suggested donation levels. And so, like um, 50 or 1,000 or something like that. Uh, enter any of these, um, and I guess even if you do, um, donors will always still have the ability to enter any amount they'd like. Um, so, you know, if you want to suggest donation levels to them, you can. If not, um, that's okay, too. Um, but the good thing about donation levels is that you can kind of add a label to them um, that kind of describes what that amount of money would mean for your organization. Um, you know, maybe $500 would feed a family of four for a month, or $1,000 would sponsor a classroom for an entire year. Um, whatever the case may be, it's a way to kind of make that donation amount a little more um, tangible to the donor. Um, so similarly, you just click add a donation level, um, you enter an amount and a label. Uh, it's pretty simple. The labels do need to be 40 characters or less, um, and that's just sort of a design and spacing constraint of the donation form itself. Um, so kind of Try to keep it short and sweet and succinct um, when you're describing what that amount of money um, would do. And so once you've gone through uh, those areas of your profile, so again, the overview page where you have the edit your profile, um, you've added the users that you'd like to, you've entered multimedia, so the images and the videos that you want to scroll on your profile, programs and events that are applicable um, that you'd like to sort of make visible to the public, and any donation levels you'd like to offer donors when they're checking out and making a donation to your organization. After you've completed all of that, um, you'll see this orange submit for approval button. Um, so you'll go ahead and click that, and you'll notice that your profile status changes to awaiting review. 
And so similar to the registration form um, that the, or the Oregon Trail Community Foundation has uh, reviewed, they're going to review all of the profile information that you've submitted to make sure that it's complete, um, that it looks accurate to the best of their knowledge, um, really just making sure that everything looks good to go. And then once they determine that everything is good to go, they're going to approve your profile. Um, and so when that happens, you'll get an email notification letting you know that your profile has been approved. And really, it's at that point that your profile becomes public on the website. So for the sake of this training, I've gone ahead and approved the organization on the back end. And so the next time you log in, you'll see that your profile is approved. Um, and then if you go to the WyoBraskaGives.org website, you'll be able to see your profile. So when you're on Wyobraska Gives, um, you go to Discover Nonprofits, and here's where you'll be able to see all of the nonprofits that have been approved. Um, so if we search for our CivicCorps example and click into that, you'll be able to kind of see how everything translates, translates from that profile to this front end. Um, so obviously your organization name, your mission statement and logo will be at the top. And then you'll see those multimedia images sort of cycling through. Um, so you can add as many as you'd like there. If there are videos, you'll be able to click on it, on the video, and it'll pop open and play that video. Um, and then obviously some address and contact information, um, that more about us section will show here, as well as testimonials you can click the down arrow to kind of toggle between those areas. So more or less, um, that is the profile creation process. Um, if you have any questions about what to enter or um, you know, where you are in the process or anything like that, please reach out to the Oregon Trail Community Foundation directly, and they'll be able to sort of assist you with the process um, and any questions you may have. Thank you so much for your participation in Wyobraska Gives Day. We're really looking forward to making this first year um, a great success for you.